Hey everybody, welcome back to another intern interview prep video. In this video, we're gonna talk about working with an API and working with JavaScript array methods building an application. So we're gonna go over like, how can we actually use these array methods that we've been learning about and that you may know and love, but you're not exactly sure how to implement them in a real world project. We're also gonna work with an API to help you level up. And I really want you to start building projects on your own and be able to say, look, I built this. So an easy way to do that is to work with APIs. If you haven't already, go ahead and watch my last video on intro to web APIs so you can get situated and familiar. And if you've already seen that, come back here. So let's just jump right in. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna do a code walkthrough of a really simple app that I made to show you guys how we can use array methods in applications and how to work with a REST API. So first I'm gonna just show you this file structure. It's super simple. All I use is create react app. If you don't know what that is, that's a really great tool to get you up and running and building apps really quickly without having to worry about installing dependencies and like having to set up your project. You can just run a command in your terminal and it'll set up this code for you. All I did is I added a folder called components and a component called listcountries.js. That's all I did. Oh, I also npm installed um, the dependencies for Material UI. In this video, I'm using Material UI just because, like I said, I want to abstract out all of the small stuff like building your UI components and like getting the colors right and making it look pretty so you can just focus on JavaScript and the stuff that you need to really let shine in an interview because when it comes to styling and components, a lot of companies have a library of components, so you're not really going to have to worry much about doing that. So let's just jump right into it. So let me just go ahead and run this for you guys so you can see how it works. So what I did is I just went and CD into desktop because that's where my workspace folder is. And then I do CD into the actual thing. And now I can see that I'm in the right folder. And then I'm just going to do NPM start. This is going to start up my local server, the development server, and it'll tell you, OK, it's ready now. OK, cool. So now we have our app running and it's really basic we're using an api called countries which gives us information about all of the different countries and all we're doing is we're displaying the region country name country capital and the population additionally we have these filters at the top that allow the user to filter by region so if i only want to see european countries if i only want to see the americas if i only want to see polar if i only want to see asia africa and reset so we're going to do a code walkthrough of how we achieve this using the really basic array methods that you should know if you're applying to internships, which are map and filter. And actually, I also want to show you guys material UI so that you don't get confused and all crazy. So it's just a UI library. And all that means is that they have all these little pieces that you can just use. So for example, in components, buttons, instead of you making your own button and having to worry about the CSS and like the hover states and making these cool animations, you can literally just copy this code and paste it into your code. And now you have these exact buttons. So it's pretty easy. I'm using that for the UI stuff because I wanted to focus on the JavaScript, like I said. So now let's hop back to our app and hop back to our VS code. Again, all we're doing is one component. We're making this list countries component and then an app.js, we're rendering that component after importing it. So in our list countries component, this stuff at the top you can ignore. This has to do with the styling for the UI components. This is copy pasted from our um, material UI. So I didn't even have to do much there. So don't worry about that. I'll make myself smaller. It's outside of our component. We have this const called base URL. And here's where we put the endpoint for the API. And I got that by going to the website. So, so if we go to country rest API, it's this first link and it shows us what the endpoints are. So I'm using the version two endpoint because I made this before version three came out and I'll zoom in for you guys. But as you can see, the endpoint is just HTTPS restcountries.com slash V2 slash all. Then I also did some filtering because I don't want to get all of these different fields. I only needed population, capital, region, and name. So I did filtering by going here to filter response, filter response. And here it shows you how you can filter. So you can filter by doing question mark fields equals and then the fields that you want separated by commas. Let's go back to our code. So we see here, I just set the base URL and I filtered the field's name, capital, population, and region because that's what I wanted to display in my app. So the first thing that we're doing is we're defining what this list countries component is. So we do export default function, the name of our components, which should start with the capital letter always. 
And since it's a functional component, we go ahead and do these parentheses and then curly brackets. So now at the top, the first thing I always do is I think about what is the state that I need to keep track of in this component. So in this component, I need to keep track of the countries that are being displayed. And with that, I have to think about the filtering. So what happens when a user clicks Asia? How does it actually filter out all the stuff? So here I define countries and set countries. And this is the use state hook. If you are not sure what this is, go back to my video where it's React interview intern prep. That one I go over in depth how to use the state. So I'm going to assume you know how to use state. Um, set countries and set all countries. And you're going to see why I made that distinction here a little bit below. So I define a function called get countries, which actually makes a request to our API. The request to our API is made through Axios. And this is something that you're going to have to NPM install. You just Google Axios NPM install. It's like a, you know, three word command that you just install directly into your command line, just like we did earlier with um, when we ran npm start. So instead of doing npm start, you just do npm install, whatever the Axios command is. So I make a variable called resp country, short for response countries, and I say await this fetch. So it's going to do axios.get and I pass in the base URL. This is just the styling and the syntax for it. Don't worry about this. You pass in the base URL. And then I say another variable called country list equals the data from here. And the reason I do that is because rest countries is going to come back as a response. And remember, it can have different shapes. It can have nested objects. It can have arrays. And I know what this looks like. And there's something called the dot data property. So let's just actually run this. Let's go ahead and do console.log resp countries. So let's see. This is the raw response that we get from the API. So let's just take a look at this. So if we go, if we refresh and then go here and we go to right click inspect and we open up this console, we can see uh, we're looking for something that says resp countries, resp countries. So here it's an object. And in this object, there's a bunch of stuff like config that I don't need that has all this stuff in it. It has this headers that I don't need, requests, all this stuff. But what I do need is what's inside of data. What's inside of data is actually the countries, the capitals, and all that. So that's why for this line, that's why here I said country list is this variable and the dot data property. And we just saw why. Um, so let's dig into this a little bit more. So if we open up our data, it's an array. And in the array, there are 0 to 99 objects. And we know it's an object because if we look at this, it has these curly braces and it has key value pairs. The key is name, the value is Afghanistan, etc. So if we open this up, these are all of the different properties or the different fields that we can use in our app. So if we say dot capital, we're going to get the value of Kabul. If we say dot name, we're going to get Afghanistan. And that's exactly what we're doing in our app, right? So now country list holds our actual country array, our actual country array. And in this array, there's objects. Each object is its own country with all of that data that we requested. Um, I console logged this just to make sure that it was working right. And it is. And then I do set countries and set all countries to country list. So set both of these variables to have all of the countries. Both have the array that contains all of these different objects. Now. A use effect, again, if you don't know this, go check out the other video. When the use effect gets triggered, which is once in the beginning, and because I passed in an empty dependency array, this is only going to get called once in the beginning when this first loads. So the use effect hook call, runs. It actually calls the function that I just defined. So boom, now my states are set. Countries and all countries have this array of objects. And now let's just go down here and see how we actually displayed this data. So in after our return statement, so actually what gets painted onto the screen, what gets rendered onto the screen, uh, we did it like this. So we have an outer div. This nested div has a class name called classes top. Again, this comes from up here. This comes from up here. See classes dot top. So again, this is from material UI. Don't worry too much about this. Let's worry about the data and how it's actually being shown. So up here, we can see that we're defining these buttons that we saw at the top. So let's scroll over and see. So we're saying button. We set the class name. Again, ignore these. The value for the button is Asia. For the Asia button, Africa for Africa, etc. And then we pass an on-click method. 
and the onClick method gets triggered when a user clicks our button. And for us, the onClick is going to call this function called filter by, which we will go over in a second. Going down to the actual display where we see all these countries, we have this card component that again is from Material UI. And let's just worry about the data display. So we are showing countries, which is the name of our state variable, countries. So we're saying go to our countries array and dot map over the countries array. So remember dot map, it goes through each element in the array and then executes some function on them. Some, it does something to it. For each item in countries, I want you to create a card component, which is from Material UI. And inside that component, I want you to render my items region, my items name, my items capital, and my items population next to, uh, you know, the word population colon. And that's literally it. That's how we display this data. Now let's go back up to the filtering method. So again, dot filter is a very common array method, one that you should know. So let's go here array filter method so if we go here to the docs we'll see filter method creates a new array with all the elements that pass the test implemented by the provided function so we pass in a callback function that sets a condition so in this case result i want it to be anything in the words array that passes this filter and the filter is where word dot length is greater than six so back to our code, the filter that the condition that we want to set is we want to say only pass the countries that have the region that matches the region that I'm passing in. So filter by takes in a region, right? Because it needs to know what region are you trying to filter by? So we're going to pass in a region and then we're going to say if there is no region, that's what this exclamation point is. Exclamation point is negating. So if there's not region, if there's no region, it's passed. Then we're going to set countries to all countries. So remember, all countries also has the array with all the countries. Or that's what this colon says. Or to set countries to be all countries dot filter. OK, so all the countries that pass this test and the test is where country dot region equals the region that we passed in. So this might seem confusing because these are all called regions. So let me change this. Let's call this area just so that there's two different words and this will change to area boom so we're saying hey the filter function is going to work like this i'm going to pass you an area if an area gets passed to you this should be area if an area gets passed to you and it's not null basically i want you to set countries so re-update my state my new state should be all countries dot filter and the filter the condition that i want to pass is that country dot region equals the area that I pass to you. And we can see that the way that we are running this is by actually going to the buttons and we say, hey, when any of these buttons are clicked, we're going to pass this. This event is going to call our function filter by and each button passes its own area name, its own region name. So when you call um, filter by with Asia, this is what it would look like. It would, it passes Asia here. It passes Asia here. And then it says, okay, I want to pass all countries. I want a new array and I want that array to be set to, to countries, right? Cause set countries is sets countries, sets the, um, sets the state variable that's called countries. So I want to update whatever's in countries, right? Because remember, countries is what's actually being shown here. Countries is the array that's getting mapped over. So we want to say, hey, update this list, like the master list that is being shown. So we want to say set country. So update countries to be what's currently in all countries that matches this filter where the country dot region equals Asia. And again, if this was Europe or Africa, that's what it would look like when it's actually making that call. It would pass in um, the correct name. So now we've worked with an API and we've used JavaScript array methods to develop a real app. And that was it. So if you follow this tutorial, you've officially built your own very first app and you used an API and you used array methods in a real app. And that's a huge step for leveling up your building and being competitive in today's day and age for internships and junior level positions. Please do let me know if this helped. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, 